All right, today's treatment and rehab session is working on mobilization of the SIJ, the sacroiliac joint. Some stretches for it for home and some strengthening that you can do home or the gym to help stabilize it. So when we have patients that have got stiff, dysfunctional, sore SIJ joints that need mobilization, this is what we do. Now there's a couple of things that we work on. One is an AP posterior glide and two is a posterior rotation sort of type movement. Now this is for people who have got stiffness through that SI joint. Maybe that joint's not moving too well, there's a bit of pain there. So if someone is hypermobile, so meaning too loose, and that might be from pregnancy, becoming too loose to that pregnancy, that pelvis is expanding, that's where we don't really mobilize that, we work on stability, and you'll see that in the second video. But if someone is stiff from chronic back pain problem, or they may have some trauma in that SIJ, and they've developed a stiffness with a, you know, a glute system that's not really working and then it's got weak, then we need to stretch it out and it gives them relief, gets it moving better, and then they work on the stretches for home and strengthening. So, posterior rotation. So let's say it's the right hand side SIJ joint. So this one here, what I tend to do is block that sacrum with a towel. So with this one, with the lease, I'm gonna put that block of towel there, which is sort of like a nice soft block there, right in the middle of your sacrum there like that. Okay, so when she comes back over, that needs to be in the middle between left and right. And that point there, depends on you can, you know, depends on how mobile they are, but if they're quite stiff, you'll find that it doesn't move very much when you do like an AP sort of glide, pushing that femur, meaning if you go down through the femur into that hip joint, it will then move that ilium on the right hand side and because I've got a block in that sacrum I will get a little bit of a shear load okay there's not much moving going on it's a very stiff tight joint but I will create some load pressure there which gives it a bit of a stretch so what tends to happen sometimes if people are very mobile on their lower back when I push down it'll roll their pelvis so sometimes you actually just have to put a little bit of counter pressure on the opposite side but from this point here I'm going to try and drive straight down through vertically even on a little bit of angle sometimes maybe going outwards a bit I'm going to push that down making sure she's okay and just start loading some pressure in there and this is a good way of assessing how much sort of movement she's got generally around that area and how much pain comes out of it. So if someone's very, very acute and they've got a lot of inflammation there, maybe they're hypermobile, that will be painful straight away with some spasm. You've got to be careful of that. But for this one, for someone who's just stiff, it's chronic and needs loosening up, this is a really nice way to relieve, get some movement in there, but also if you like, teach the brain a bit that movement is okay, and so if there's any spasm or guarding around that joint, that can actually start backing off because you're providing some movement in there. So this one I'd start getting into maybe 20, you know, 10 or 20 reps of that, and then reassess it every time. And usually what happens is the improvements are in the movement going forward and going backwards into flexion and extension of the lumbar spine. So that would be your AP glide. I'll show you how that she does a stretch for that at home to sort of mimic that when she goes home. But the posterior rotation one is also, I find, is a good one to help them with their flexion. Because many SIJ problems that like, say, fats on your left hand side and the pain's like there, when they bend forward, they get the pain into there. And it can be and cannot be associated with lower back trouble as well. So that's something you have to clear as well. But if it's just specifically that SIJ, then we can go into some posterior rotation. Now this one, I always use a talent ad. One, it's just a comfort thing, but two, it allows a bit of grip because you're going to go under the pelvis on this bone here, okay? So that tuberosity there. All right, I'm going to come into here. My palm needs to be on that to then, if you think about this right hand side, to rotate that part, all right? Now, it helps doing a bit of muscle sort of contract, relax, relax techniques with this as well. So the patient's gonna help me do this. So I need to roll her up. She needs to sit on that bone. That bone needs to sit on my palm so I can grab onto that. This knee here is gonna provide the extension pressure against me. So what I want her to do is push your knee into me. So if you push your knee into me, that's gonna activate her glute. Now sometimes they do too much. So you just gotta sort of give them to just a little because if you do too much contraction, it moves you too much. Because you wanna stay in an isometric position, okay, from about there 
and I want you to just push gently into me. So she needs to hold that on. Now that'll activate her glute max, which will give you a bit of contraction there. So if she's gonna contract, then it's more likely that it's gonna release and I can move it when she relaxes. So if you relax to me. From that point there, I'm gonna then lift up in a PA direction and rotate her posterior like that. Okay, so that right ilium is going that way. Right? It'll feel like it's going up, but I'm trying to go up and forward, if you like, in my direction, which will give you that movement through the back there. So you just try it again for me. Just push, hold it. Just keep on. This is sort of about maybe seven, ten seconds of that. Release. And then I'll lift up maybe one or two times of that, trying to get that moving. Again, you can work out how much is she actually moving there compared to the other side. Go have a look at the other side. Okay, is she moving at all there as well? Try that again for me. Push again, go. Push, 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 push. She just holds it there and then relax again. And sometimes if they're quite sore, you'll probably find that when they actually contract, it actually takes the pain away because they're providing that joint with a bit of stability through the glute contraction. And that's that posterior rotation one. So think of when I'm in here, that's this movement here, you'll try to go that way with that, okay? Which gives you that little bit of movement through here, you can see that sacroiliac joint in there, okay? So a little bit of movement there. Remember, lots of like tight, thick ligaments in there, it's a very stable joint, but it is a joint, so it can move, and when it gets stiff, providing that little bit of movement and that muscle release around it is gold for these sort of clients. So that would be the two mobilization, the main two mobilization techniques I use in the clinic to help with that stiffness area. But they've got to go home and do that sort of stretch as well. So the first thing I get them doing is the AP type glide by themselves. So let's have a look at that. So doing an AP type glide that I did in the clinic by herself, she'll have to go into all fours to do that. So four point knee. Now in this position, we're gonna train the, or stretch the right hand side. So we did the right hand side before. Again, I'm on this side, you're gonna do the right hand side again. The way she does that, now in bed it's a little bit harder, but you could probably do this in a sofa. She's just gotta be able to hold on here, okay, so she doesn't tip off the bed. When you're in bed, if you you might have to grab onto a sheet or something to give you some sort of you know, grab there and some stability because she's gonna drop one leg off the side of the bed. So if you shuffle towards me there, Luce, okay? So her right leg is gonna be on the edge of the bed, which allows her to let this leg freely hang and move up and down. Because what you're trying to provide is movement, if that's her pelvis, you're trying to provide movement that way, okay? Now because this is blocked here, you're gonna get a shear load through here. So this is gonna go down, technically giving her that same type of movement that I was giving. It's the best that she can possibly do without being in the clinic. So from there, she's gonna think about not rotating in the, pel in the lower back. So that sort of needs to stay reasonably sort of stable. She's gonna try and drop her leg down as far as you can go. And she, of course she's gonna twist through here, but not excessively, until she feels a bit of a stretch on the right side of the SOJ. Now people who are a little bit sore and stiff in that will feel that stretch, okay? Then she lifts her knee up on that side to relieve it, to come out of that pressure stretch, let it relieve, and then slowly go down again. So that whole pelvis is tilting down, which because her knee's blocked on this side, gives her a stretch on that side, okay? And then she lifts up again, there's a relief, down again for a stretch, as far as you can go. And the good thing about this is, one, you know, you're doing a bit of mobilization through here, but you're also teaching your brain movement is okay around that, there's not too much compressive load through your lower back. She's also using her right-sided glute, which is the key, to do the movement, to hitch up and down. Yes, she's using a little bit of back and core, but she's doing a lot of sort of subtle work on that right hip. And that right hip is going to be the savior for her right SIJ. And I'll go through that with the strengthening. So that is the first stretch she's going to do. The second one is on her back. So if you go into your back for me. So if we go again, same thing, right hand side. She's going to try and mimic the posterior rotation one. And she's going to use the contract relax with this. So if this leg is down, this leg here, she can then go and hold that one. Now, I would start probably just at maybe 90 degrees or however long her arms are, that's where she starts. She's gonna then, imagine this hand is, is sort of me and obviously she's gonna push into that. So she's gonna resist with this arm. She's gonna use her glute to hip extend here, pushing her knee this way and blocking it with her hands. So she contracts the glute in that position. 
and for seven, ten seconds or so, and then relaxes. And when she relaxes, just moves forward an inch or two, and then she waits, let it sort of recover, and then she goes again in that position, but making sure she doesn't push her knee back to the position she started on. So she, every time she does it, she's got to stay in that next position. It's almost like a sort of clock going forward. So the next time she does it, she's going to move forward to an inch. So if you relax and go forward, then she's got to stay there. So when she resists there, she's got to work hard on her arms to try and resist that position. And she's going to do as many as she can until that knee is almost full range or hips full range, knee up to the chest. So she's contract relaxing through that range, which just helps that release movement and that spasm movement that's going on around that SIJ that's giving you part of the problem. So that's a nice one to do. The other one that we also work on with this sort of idea is a push-pull. Now this one is really, really good. So if you can hold that leg up as well and that leg up, with a push-pull, what she's going to do is almost like if you've ever tried to open a jam jar and you have to rotate one and rotate the other at the same time. Okay, you're gonna sort of stabilize one and rotate the other. And if you keep doing it, all of a sudden you freeze up that pressure and it releases. Not that your SIJ is gonna go pop. But what we want to make I give the idea of it is we're trying to use the other side as a torque sort of movement to help her. So if she's gonna go, you'll do this both ways, but if she's gonna provide that torque movement, she's gotta push, say, this leg that way pull this leg this way. So she's using hip flexor on the right, glute on the left, and she's got to try and keep her knees even. So what she does, this is her resistance. So she's resisting herself, all right? So she's got to go and start cranking it up and start adjusting how much load she can just and maximize as hard as she can below pain, all right, for 10 seconds. So she's trying as hard as she can as the arms, hard as she can as the legs, and then relax. And what I get her doing is maybe three the same way, Okay, so you go pull, you're sort of pulling up there, pushing down, pushing down there, pulling up. So you're just resisting that. Think of that jam jar, trying to open it, and then relax again, okay, and three times. Then she'll swap and just do it completely the other way. And you'll find that with people with you know, problems on one side, they'll be better one way than another. They'll find it difficult. They won't have as much activation going on there because of those pain messages. But this is a really nice way of doing a static load movement here without loading her back up or loading her SIJ up, just trying to create some torque and movement and some contract relax movement. So meaning she relaxes the tissue, she also contracts the tissue around the pelvis, which gives you that sort of stability. And you probably find when they start doing this and they get up, they just all of a sudden, their movement has improved, their spasms backed off, muscles have switched on, a bit more stability, and that's half the game. So that is all her stretching done. The mobilization work you do in the clinic, some stretching to at home. Now, in part two, let's look at all the strengthening that we do to try and stabilize that SIJ.